Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, the beautiful, the sexy, the razor blade, <laughs> Beatrice. <laughs> Hi. We're here to talk mom talk, which is yep. the secret lives of Mormon wives. Mm -hmm. We are on the last two episodes. We are wrapping this shit up, honey. We are wrapping it up. Going out with a... Mormon bang. Kind of. Cliffhanger. Sort of, a little bit of a cliffhanger. Yeah. That goddamn Dakota. Oh my God. That oh my, cheating asshole. So much to say about him. Me too. Before we get into it, we do have to issue a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast in which we do not talk politics much. we say a lot of stupid things and we use a lot of bad words mm -hmm. and so if you're sensitive you might want to find yourself another dumpster but if you're ready to talk mom talk uh. and mormon wives yeah and secret lives <laughs> welcome to this dumpster and if you are ready to talk about mormonism with us be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe we have a lot of bonus content up on there it's good if you are watching on youtube <laughs> first of all like attracts like yeah i believe in the law of attraction yeah that is why you are all beautiful uh, and sexy so gorgeous thank you for being here <laughs> please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe please so that subscribe. we can continue to grow to get bigger to get fatter Ooh. feed us seymour please thank you in advance. Thank you. All right, let's get into it, honey. All right, Take girl. us on a Mormon journey. Well, last week we were still in Vegas. Yes. Miss Chippendale's fiasco. Oh my God, so vulgar. Oh my God. Jen and Taylor had the audacity to walk inside Chippendale's. They haven't even seen any strippers yet. And yet Dakota and Zach flip out especially zach yes so we pick up right where we left off with jen fucking crying because mm -hmm. zach just spewed some obscenities at her said i'm gonna leave your ass we're getting a divorce because you're not a woman of morals as he's gambling all of her money away right that he did not work for after I apparently don't... gambling his parents money I away know. his parents gave him money so he could go to college and go to medical school and he ran right through that gambling which i guess is okay though if you're a mormon right gambling's not a sin or something oh i guess actually it is a sin it is yeah but rules for thee and not for me correct is what zach's philosophy is and jess talks about how she hates men like this especially in the church this is why she distanced herself from it i think it's safe to say we all hate men like this. Of course. I hate people like this, but I especially hate men like this. Of course. Yeah. But apparently I was talking to Ethel about it. This is so common, like in the LDS church, like mm -hmm. men like this, because it is kind of a patriarchal mm -hmm. religion. Kind of. I mean, very much so. Yeah. And a lot of these men are like this, where they just fuck around and do all this stupid shit, but the wives have to be perfect. Yeah. I don't know. It smells to me like deep insecurity, like sure. Mr. Zach Affleck has a very small pamper penis a very much Tiny, so baby penis micro. and so he can't even fathom a world where his wife is seeing men with average to large size <laughs> penises and like oh my god she's gonna realize holy fuck i've been supporting this uh, this um translucent hitler youth person mm -hmm. i've been paying all of his bills he's gambling away my money and he's got a baby penis game over uh, yeah let me just leave with one of these chippendale gay dancers and that's what jen should do yes that's what I she would, should have done i would love that for you jen that would be so great but no jen and taylor want to be good mormon ladies and they end up leaving chippendales all together they're like no we got to respect our our mans for some reason even though they're not respectable and they leave they go home i think with michaela too or whatatever she's such a background character yeah I'm like i don't step even, up michaela for real use your throat chakra <laughs> and they get back home and jen is like sobbing because zach's not answering any of her texts or her phone calls or anything he's super pissed off while he's gambling her money away and i can't remember what really happened but jen ends up leaving yeah at two in the morning yeah. after he's done gambling yeah so he's being abusive mm -hmm. to her over text while he is busying himself losing all of her money and then as soon as he is done at 1 30 or 2 in the morning he says okay we'll get over here right now or it's over and so of course she goes running after that 
asshole mid man mm-hmm. that mid man mm-hmm. and below she, average yep she leaves everybody she leaves the girls trip to go and work it out with zach into the evening into the morning yep and apparently they had like a horrible like long argument slash talk they ended up right. working things out but while this is happening jen's ignoring all of the girls' calls right. and texts and they're all like super concerned for her yeah because he's a crazy person yeah he looks like a crazy person uh-huh. and he acts like a crazy person and yep. so dateline nbc anyone for real the first 48 anyone so they're kind of worried like what is he doing to her but seriously i mean she's ghosting everybody and i was kind of worried for her too she ends up being fine We'll get to that later. And then meanwhile, we have fucking Whitney back in Utah. Don't care. Connor apparently talked to Jesse's husband, okay. Jordan. Gossiping with the queen. Gossiping with I'm the sorry. gays. <laughs> That's terrible. But like, okay, <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Apparently they were gossiping. Jordan told him everything that happened in Vegas. So Connor's got to be the gay best friend to Whitney mm-hmm. and tell her everything that's happening. And Whitney tries to pretend like she doesn't care. <clears throat> She's like, I don't really give a fuck. I don't like any of them. I'm on the side of Zach. But yeah, she's like, because Jen is not a friend to me. Like, like since when? Jen was sitting in the closet yeah. with you when Demi was coming for your neck and she was defending you mm-hmm. and she's a saint. And what are you talking about? She's not a friend. Well, this is Whitney we're talking about. Mm-hmm. She's a bitch. Right. I don't know who said that Whitney has a propensity to like sidle up to somebody, get close to somebody, take them for everything that she can get and then toss them aside. Jess said that. Yep. Yeah, and this is exactly what she's doing to Jen. 100%. And we'll see her in the next episode. When she shows up at Michaela's birthday party. Girl, what the (laughs) fuck was that? I don't know. We'll get to it, though. And then we have um, Jen finally texting Demi, like, the day after, like, way in the afternoon. And she's like, yeah, I'm okay. And Demi immediately calls her, and she's like, what the fuck happened between you and Zach? And Jen's like, yeah, no, like, we're totally fine now. Like, we worked it out. It's so great. Like, he totally apologized. He's so awesome. He's amazing. We're oh great. Oh, my gosh. Friends like this are so exhausting. I know. I don't know if you've ever had a friend who was in a situation that – I'm not talking about, like, straight-up abuse, but just, like, is with a loser. Yeah. Is therefore um, subjected to loser shenanigans and is constantly complaining about it and or you're witnessing it. I mean, it is exhausting. Like you can't want somebody to respect their own selves more than they want to do that. Yeah. And but you also want to be there for them. Of course. And of course, later, like all the girls gather around Jen and they have like a, a little conversation and they actually get in her ass quite a bit about her husband, which I loved. That was so good. Especially Jesse and Demi, which I loved. But like so at good. some point, I'm just like, lady... If all you're doing is talking about Mormonism and how great your fucked up loser of a husband is, then I just don't have time for you in my life. I mean, for real. Low quality. Like you make your bed, you now you got to lie in it. Low vibes. For real. Terrible. Like this guy's awful. And she even calls him a narcissist later when she's talking to the girls. That's crazy. So she knows. She's conscious. She's just staying with him for why? I don't know. I don't know. She's the breadwinner. She could kick his ass to the curb. 100%. She could have anybody that she wants. Of course. But she won't. Nope. And then we have Dakota coming over to the house later to... Just leave these (sighs) girls alone. It is literally a girl's trip. They don't want guys over at the house, but you storm in because you haven't had a full conversation with Taylor because the night before you were all insecure because she was at the Chippendales because you too, sir, have a pamper peen. Mm -hmm. And so you need to get all up in her face while she's heavy with child. Heavy Heavy with with child. child. You want to get all the way up in her face while she's lying down, super pregnant, and try to work this relationship out because once again, you're bothered that she's not committing to you. Yeah. Like, stop well did you it's see too much did you see his pupils in this scene yes they were hella dilated yep. i'm like you on something dude it did seem like it and he is the biggest bitch baby of them all because right before this he was calling up brett while they were at chippendales and he was talking about how he didn't like the idea of these sweaty gay men gay strippers <laughs> yeah grinding up on taylor's pregnant ass while she's pregnant with his kid i'm like you are ridiculous you are so weak you are so dumb it's not a big deal and then you come over and the girls are like yeah taylor's sleeping 
she, like don't bother her and he barges in anyway yeah, he runs up the stairs i mean bypassing the girls on the lower level who want him high. to go away yeah because he's high and because he doesn't care and he wants to stomp all over taylor's boundaries and he thinks if he can get up in her face and continue to be there right in her face she won't dump him yeah it's like crazy by the way sidebar huh. we know that they broke up well yeah and but now, now they're back together uh-huh unfortunately i post that about on her ig Did i'm you? like why i don't i don't get literally it. why his why? dick game cannot be that good no uh, it's got to be the hormones or something her mm-hmm. being like well but like my child needs a dad you know what your kid's probably better off without this loser yes seriously does he even work no does he have a job he's broke what does he do he's high taylor why he's doing drugs he's a piece of shit and then we have the girls going to dinner, but Jen's not there because she's still talking with Zach. Well, she's got to change his diapers. Yes, of course. <laughs> He's got a bit of a rash, and so she's got to powder his balls and change his diapers. <laughs> That's so funny. So for real, though. Mm-hmm. So true. And so she ends up calling them while they're in the middle of eating. And she's like, oh, am I late? Like, I want to make, to make it to dinner. And they're like, no, we're doing other stuff. Like, well, we'll I mean, we've later. ordered. We're like, eating. Like, what do you think? It's yeah. like nine o'clock. Like, what the fuck? Dumb but then bitch. Jen ends up coming over at some point to talk with them outside the restaurant or something. And this is mm-hmm. where all the girls gang up on her. Yeah. <laughs> that was Zach. great. That was really great. Yeah. Like, Jesse was telling her, I'm literally disgusted by your husband. Who does he think he is hmm. talking about all of our marriages? Because in the text that he was sending Jen that night when she was crying after the Chippendales, he's like, I mean, why do you care about all of these women and what they have to say? Like, look at their marriages and starts criticizing all these girls. And I'm just like, Zach. He's a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And that's why Jesse brings it up because she's like, it's not fair that he treats you like shit, but then he has to bring all of us and all of our husbands into this. That's not fucking cool. He disrespects all of us and he disrespects you. Like, he's a piece of shit. And Jen just looks so fucking defeated. She starts crying and I get it. Yeah. Because... They're not ganging up on her, but they're like all trying to reason. Yes. And they're very direct with her because he is so terrible and they are legitimately concerned for her. But she starts breaking down and crying and realizing that, yes, it's bad. But we had like the best conversation. He really gets it. You guys don't understand. He's so sorry now. No, he's not. No, he's not. We've been around the world and I, 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 we've seen a million guys like Zach. Yeah. When you're 40 and looking back at that weird headed man. Girl. (laughs) Thinking of all the time you wasted with that two-inch micro penis, you're going to be like, what the fuck was I thinking? Seriously. Subsidizing his college education, probably paying for his medical school while uh-huh. he's gambling away your money, telling you he doesn't give a shit about mom talk. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't care about mom talk and what you're doing. Really? Well, then how do you pay your mortgage, though? What? Like, how do you afford your cars, then? How do you Seriously? go to school if you don't care about mom talk? Zach. And then he forces her to move to go to med school. Girl, I just... Ooh, this man. Yeah, let's move to New York in 2024 with all yeah. the rats and all the um, attacks in the street and uh, the subway drama. Uh, that yeah. sounds fantastic. Me and my two little babies will move with you to New York where you'll neglect me because you're a misogynist piece of shit. Yep. And I'm like, how are you going to afford that, though, when she's the one that's paying for everything? Oh, your parents are probably going to pay for you to live up there. Probably. I, I don't know. I think she's going to continue to pay for it. I don't know. I, I would like to hear more about their queen situation. But Jen, the fact that she is saying that he's got these narcissistic tendencies that only come out every few months or whatever, and she's justifying that, like, oh, no, he's just going through a lot. That's why he becomes a narcissistic, misogynistic piece of ass. No, piece of shit. You don't temporarily become narcissistic. You have a personality disorder called uh-huh. narcissism. Yeah. And if it's happening every few months, well, what you are describing is a cycle yeah it is a pattern this person has a personality disorder you in danger you in danger girl Mm -hmm. and i feel bad for her because she's totally a victim and she's hypnotized by this guy and his translucent hair i just don't understand i don't get it either i don't get it i don't get it either (sighs) and then in the last episode the season finale we have taylor heavy with child Mm -hmm she's confronting dakota about this macy's confession because we kind of brought it up through the last episodes but it was kind of like a nothing burger like macy's like do i tell her do i tell her not like I don't well know. a little bit of context so macy had received this 
not a DM, but she does like this question and answer thing on her mm. TikTok slash Instagram where people can confess something that's going on in their lives. So somebody has written in and confessed that they slept with Dakota Accidentally. when he was already with Taylor, yeah. which is something that Taylor is currently worried about. And if she finds out that Dakota cheated on her, she will 100% leave his sorry fentanyl addicted ass. Uh-huh. And so here comes this confession. Macy's been sitting on it because she's like, oh my God, she's about to give birth my friend's about to give birth she's already in a terrible predicament with dakota who's constantly in her face and screaming at her and or crying when do i tell her about this confession yep well she ends up telling her yes and taylor's like thanks for telling me i have a feeling i think that this is true but i'll have to talk to him about it she thinks it's a this girl named jenna who's a girl that she was worried about from their very beginning dakota told taylor that he only kissed her an accident or whatever (laughs) right but Taylor's worried that something more happened. So then it's the next day after Chippendales or whatever. I don't know what the timeline is, but she's like putting together some diaper trash can or something. And her mom calls her. She tells her about Vegas, tells her about Dakota being a piece of shit. Her mom's like, you're ruining your life. (laughs) Why are (laughs) you doing this? Why are you with this guy? He's a piece of shit. You need to talk to him. And then conveniently, he walks through the door. Right. So then Taylor talks to Dakota about it and is like, um, yeah, so Macy got this confession. I want to make sure that it's not true. And then Dakota immediately gets defensive. Starts yelling. Starts yelling and turns it around on her. Mm-hmm. Says, you're the one that creates all these problems. And Macy causes this drama in our relationship. And I'm like, if you were telling the truth, why are you so defensive? Why are you yelling at her? Why are you blaming her? Yeah. Why aren't you just assuring her in a calm voice? Like, look, we've talked about this. This is not true. Like, why are you doing all this? Because he's a liar. You sound like a cheater. Yeah, because he totally did. Absolutely. I believe it. He totally slept with this chick. But now he's mad at Macy. Yep. Not because he's not mad that he actually cheated on Taylor. Yeah. He's mad at Macy because Macy told Taylor about the confession. And also because Macy does tend to see their relationship up close. Taylor confides in Macy. And so Macy's always counseling her to dump this loser. Yep. And Dakota knows it. So now Dakota wants to have a little bit of a meeting with Macy. In her car. Yeah. He immediately is like, yeah, I need to talk to you. Because he doesn't own his own car. No, of course, because he's broke. He right. doesn't even have furniture. <laughs> no, no, not at all. He has nothing. So he gets in the car with Macy and immediately is also kind of yelling at her. And he's like, Mm -hmm. you cause all this fucking drama in my relationship. Why do you have to bring up this confession? And Macy's like, why are you mad at me? Mm -hmm. Some bitch messaged me anonymously about this. And so, of course, I'm going to bring it up to my friend because I'm loyal to my friend. I am not loyal to you, bitch, period, point blank. And he has like nothing else to say other than like, well, it's not true. And I don't know why you had to bring it up. Why are you causing all these problems in my relationship? I'm like, you're deflecting. You're gas lamping, which is what my husband calls it. Gas You're lamping. gas lamping me. <laughs> For real. Just get out of my car, Dakota, and go walk home. You Bye. loser. <laughs> Seriously, so stupid. And then we shift gears a little bit, and we have Whitney and Connor at their family dinner. Mm-hmm. And Whitney has a special announcement and a special cake that she made for her family. Mm-hmm. And um, her mom starts slicing into this cake. Mm-hmm. and when he's like yeah you feel something weird in there and her mom's like yeah something kind of hard what the fuck is this pulls out her raw pee stick her raw pregnancy test yes that shows that it's positive it's not wrapped up in anything it's not put in a plastic bag or no. anything it's just in there raw dogging in the cake that's right and when he's like yeah i thought it'd be funny and like unique that i would show this announcement to thanks you for making me touch it and the sister at the table's like, that's fucking gross, dude. Like, I'm, you peed on it. And have to move the, all the frosting away from the little pregnancy yes or no window. It's disgusting on every level. Whitney, you're disgusting. She's so fucking weird. The RSV video, the raw pregnancy test and the cake. Like, where are any of the redeeming qualities that she's supposed to have to make me want to care about her? I don't know. There's none. I literally don't care. And she talks about mom talk and how she doesn't want anything to do with anybody. Sure, but you're coming back for season two. And mm-hmm. also you use that money to support your family because what does your husband uh-huh. do anyway? So sure. Yeah. Well, she's selling a bunch of vibrators now. So she's right. got her ads for that and stuff so she's you know sex positive Uh she's got her own brand i'm sure next season is just gonna be 
drama, drama, drama. It's just going to be Whitney. Well, we'll see because she got dragged so thoroughly by everyone this yeah. season. She might try to produce herself and come oh back as God. a person who's been redeemed. I hope not. I've been redeemed no, by the haven't. blood of the, la- the Mormon lamb. <laughs> not by me. No. Nope. And then we have Jen and Zach. They've been talking and praying a lot. They're talking about their future. Oh, God. And this is where Zach's like, well, I got accepted to my dream medical school in New York. So you better come with me and Mm -hmm. abandon your career and abandon all your friends and family and everything, everything you've ever known and come and live with me in New York while I go to med school on your dime, by the way. Yep. And she's like, well, but what about mom talk? I mean, what she's really saying, what about the only income (laughs) that we are currently generating, which is the work that I do? Mm -hmm. And he's like, honestly, I don't care. I don't give a shit about it at all. Like, what? She's making all this money for you, dude. It's the only source of power that she really has, though. Yep. And it's it's through the money that she makes and being the breadwinner that she's able to assert herself and find her voice. So if he can take that away from her, then she'll just be a little robot, which is what he wants, which yeah. is what the girls call out to. Yep. And that's what abusers do. And mm-hmm. she ends up going to New York with him. Like a dummy. God. So like a dumb. dummy. I don't get it. And then we have Macy with her baby mama business launch party. Yeah. She invites all of the girls, including Whitney. Who is her best friend. Yep. And who she has been loyal to this entire time, even though Whitney has been objectively a mean girl and an awful person. Mm -hmm. Macy has stood by her nonetheless. And so this is the one thing Macy's doing. This is her baby mama launch. This is her business. She's been working on it for two years. Mm -hmm. And she expects Whitney to show up and support. But does she? Nope. No, she does not. And all the girls at the party are like, if she doesn't show up, by the time of the actual launch, because they do like a little countdown or whatever, mm-hmm. let's unfollow her at the same time off of social media. And I think they end up doing that. Yes. And then we have Michaela's birthday party, which is like the last kind mm-hmm. of big scene of the series. And everybody shows up, including Whitney. Yeah, very strangely. Like not even at the beginning of the party. It's after everybody's roller skated. Yep. After everybody has had some food. And she waltzes in in her weird cowboy boots and her weird shirt dress. And she just expects everybody to be like, oh, my God. Hi, Whitney. Yeah. But no, everybody's giving her the side eye. Like, what the fuck are you doing here? Michaela isn't even your friend. She does not like you, which Jesse tells her. That was so To her face. Why are you at this party? Because Michaela doesn't even like you. And you didn't go to Macy's party. The only person who does like you, weirdo. Like, what the actual fuck? And Whitney tries to be like, no, I'm here for Michaela. Like, I care about her. And then once Jesse's like, but she fucking hates you, though. Then Whitney's like, no, but I actually wanted to talk to Macy. Macy, can I talk to you? And then she kind of gives her like a half-ass apology, but not really. And it's like, well, I couldn't come to your launch party. Like the biggest thing of your life right now, this business that you're starting up, I couldn't be there as your best friend because I just like needed time. I just yeah. needed space uh, from everybody. And uh, Macy's like, from me? And Whitney's like, yeah. Yeah, from you. From you too. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Nobody needs a Whitney in their life. No. You're so expendable, young lady. You have no idea how important all of these relationships actually are and how you are acting is so distasteful. Yep. And one day you're going to look back and you're not going to have any friends because you know what? You're not a good friend and you attract what you are. Uh Uh-huh. And you're going to attract shitty people. Yep. And lose all the good ones in your life. 100%. And you'll end up washed up and alone with your gay husband. Mm -hmm. Congrats. And then we have Taylor having her baby. Dakota's been supportive during her birth. Yes, but I mean, it was kind of annoying, right? Yep. Like her water breaks, they're at her townhome or whatever. They're immediately up on the gram or they're immediately filming. And just the way that Dakota is so over the top, like he loves being in her videos. He really wants to be a part of what she creates. I He's know. just like fucking front and center. And then when they get to the the birthing room or the delivery room and he's just like i don't know there was something about it he just looked like looked like he wanted to be the center of attention yeah even though she's the one who's giving birth it gave me the ick Mm -hmm. like he always has to be around her like a fucking urchin sticking his head into the frame get out of here Mm -hmm. i would be so annoyed with that shit like leave me alone but they have their baby their baby's beautiful taylor's great blah 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 don't care and then we have (laughs) (laughs) jen calls jess 
to announce that she's leaving Mom Talk because she's going to go to New York. So we have two girls out of Mom Talk. Good now. riddance. Bye. How will Mom Talk ever survive? They what will. are they going to do? They do. These two girls are going to come crawling back for sure because mm-hmm. they want the money, they yeah. want the brand deals, and they want the fame. Yep. yep. And then the whole series and season ends with a cliffhanger, which is Macy in her car calling up a woman named Jenna to ask if she slept with Dakota. And Jenna is the girl, we presume, who sent in that confessional to yep. Macy's account saying that she slept with Dakota while Dakota was with Taylor. And so Macy is presumably calling and saying, I want the details. And the girl says, I'll tell you everything that happened. Mm. And that is how we end season one. Presumably, we're going to find out that Dakota did, in fact, cheat on Taylor. Yep. I don't know if that is what led to Taylor breaking up with him probably recently or whether that was something else i don't know but then she's back with him but now she's back with him and i'm like why i have no idea i don't understand but i can't wait for season two i am sold me too on secret lives of mormon wives i think this is how we should do reality tv now some of it was produced some of the events i mean we're doing axe throwing we're doing stupid bullshit yeah I i don't know if we did axe throwing did we do it uh, rage we? rooms or something like I, the, something per, that shit i'm tired of yeah but like these were real relationships mm-hmm. pre-existing real relationships actual drama and i loved it me too so what's our grade for this season i'm gonna give this a solid b <laughs> me too b yeah i think that's i a would good grade. definitely cover it next year if it if it comes back which well, it does. it's going to yeah. yeah 20 episodes yeah shit i mean that's a lot yeah we might have to bundle it up a little for bit for sure but yeah, yeah i'm into it me too Okay, well, let us know in the comments if you're watching on YouTube what you all think about Mom Talk or yeah. the show. Did you all like it? Let us know. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Um, is there anything else that we have to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. Five. It really helps us grow the pod so more people can join the dumpster. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We will be back next week to talk sister wives. And for a little while, that's going to be the only thing we're going to be covering on the general pod mm-hmm. until we're in space inspired yeah like a Marie Kondo need the joy <laughs> in some sort of a show yeah um to bring it into the general pod but we will be back for that and so make sure you come back and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye, bye.